Yo guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today for round 16 for the Russian Grand Prix. If you guys missed the last episode for the Singapore Grand Prix guys, then uh, go watch the video by clicking the card in the top right hand corner of the screen and also in the link down below in the description. Now for this one, we are here at the Sochi Autodrome. No chance of rain in qualifying or the race, but there is some rain scheduled for practice. However, we're going to get on as usual and proceed as normal in uh, practice. Again, just to confirm, just, you know, I said in the last video, but we have taken the decision that we're going to stop with R&D pushing now and we're going to focus completely on next season. And, um, you know, we was kind of fighting a losing battle. And you can see in this episode, Mercedes and McLaren have re-overtaken us and uh, we're now looking at the second half of the table, dare I say, looking at... Uh, Becoming a backmarker team by the end of the season, which is something I never thought I'd say, to be honest, after we started the season as the second best team. But unfortunately, the AI's development rate is just far too ridiculous and I cannot match it. So I have to focus elsewhere and uh, really prioritize things going into next season. Ideally, I'd like a regulation change. That could still happen. It could be a late one and it could get announced relatively late on. But... Um, uh, my gut tells me that's not going to happen because it already happened last season but if it did happen that would be great because it would really help me out and it would also give me a, an extra chance an extra boost to try and catch up to the guys around us but uh, for now like I said before in the last episode the target at the minute is to focus on in making the upgrades cheaper and also reducing the chance of them failing and also maybe some durability so basically all the upgrades that you don't really want to see and all the very boring ones at the minute I've not done anything I'm saving points and I'll probably do some upgrades maybe um, let's say in the next two or three races possibly so um yeah we'll do a video about that um, it, when, when the time comes of course but for now we're going to jump into qualifying you guys briefly saw my run to go practice took place and we had a good weekend except for the qualifying performance test where we got only the green score the purple was just a bit too quick and uh, this weekend we're running 106 percent ai guys which is kind of like my baseline and uh, normally where i find myself in this career mode after so many episodes but now we're going to jump into the first part of qualifying q1 here straight away one tenth up in q in sector one that was actually one of my stronger points and uh, the car's working pretty good to be fair, I made a few setup changes after the practice because I wasn't too sure about the balance and the changes that I did make, lowering the ride a little bit more was actually the right move and I was really, really happy with how the car felt going into qualifying and you can see here currently in Q1 my first sector was good, only a tenth up on Weber then we lost about two tenths in sector two which put me a tenth down on Weber but the final sector is where the AR are really strong and I was losing a lot of lap time here, you can see now coming towards the end of the lap here, Weber currently P1 with a 29.2 and we're going to come on to the let's see what our lap is. It's going to be a 30.2. So uh, a second off Weber's pace. And we lost pretty much 9 tenths in that final sector alone. But uh, you can see there, with that lap, that was good enough to get into Q2. Sebastian Vettel there, P10. And uh, we both jump into the second part of qualifying there with no major drivers. In Q2, this was my one and only lap in the session. So let's stay on board with it and let's see how we get on. And in my opinion, this was pretty much a near perfect lap. I was very, very happy with it. A couple of quarters where I could have carried a little bit more speed. But generally speaking... A lap that I was happy with, you know, considering it's very easy to cut and extend around here. Uh, getting one clean lap together is quite tricky. So, uh, here we go. Turn one flat out. Turn two, you're looking for a 100 meter board on the left hand side as your reference. Down to third gear, really focus on your exit here and use the curbs to really maximize the lap time. Flat out through turn three, past Daniel Kvyat grandstand and now you're looking for the reference intervals turn four just after the shadow you want to turn in and make sure you don't run too wide there we just about keep it within track limits and sector one draws to a close one tenth up pretty much on lucas weber here once again as we take a nice chunk out of that inside curb at turn five and going flat out as we go towards turn number seven here turn a little bit too late you want to turn in a lot earlier than that really pick up that inside curb and then again for this next left hander as well i turn in a little bit too uh, uh, a little bit too late and uh, left some time on the table. I reckon there's about a tenth of a second maybe in those two corners, which I could have gained. Other than that, a pretty clean lap so far. And again, no mistakes so far. And uh, a pretty smooth going lap. As we now come towards the end of sector two, and you're looking for the break point before the end of this straight. You want to break just before the 100 meter ball down to third gear. Really attack the inside curve. Make sure you don't lock up through here. Bring the car to the left hand side and get out the power as soon as possible. Only two to three tests down on Weber so far. Off to sector two, which isn't too bad. And we're now with this funnel sector, which is where I lose a lot of my time to negotiate here. But overall, a nice, smooth, clean, tidy run through there. Two more corners to go. Throw it into the penultimate corner. Take a big chunk of the inside curb. And then the final corner, just really try and launch it and hope to get to the line as soon as possible as we cross the line. And to be fair, it wasn't too bad. We are a second off the pace once again. Lost three, seven tenths in that final sector. And you can see on the screen right now, we are P7 with a minute and a half to go. And we got about three tenths in our pocket. And I felt pretty comfortable. And you can see there now with five seconds to go, nothing's really changed. And I felt confident. But then all of a sudden, I uh, cut to the results. And we dropped all the way down to P11, just like that, in uh, a blink of an eye, pretty much. Even though I was comfortably seventh, uh, we just 
got overturned really, really quickly. So unfortunately for us, we got caught out by the time simulation glitch in qualifying as uh, you cut to the black screen and the AR set a ridiculous lap time to improve their own laps. And uh, we get knocked down in P11, but it's not the end of the world. We will get the free choice of tyre and a slightly more favourable strategy. So in my opinion, it's not too bad. And um, we'll try again in the race and see if we can try and improve on that and try and chase those decent points. With that being said, though, guys, that is it for qualifying here. Not the best session, but definitely not the worst. We're now going to move into the race and it's time for round number 16 for the Russian Grand Prix here at the Sochi Autodrome. And let's see if we could try and get ourselves into the top 10. Let's do this. Good afternoon from Sochi as we prepare to get underway for the Russian Grand Prix. The championship battle has some time to go yet, but still expect no quarter to be given here on this circuit that made its debut in 2014 and has already seen some classic racing. It's full throttle for around 56% of the lap here at the Sochi Autodrome, a 3.6 mile run around the site of the 2014 Winter Olympics. 12 right turns and six left turns give us a total count of 18, with passing opportunities available into turns one and 13. And alongside me to take you through it all is none other than Anthony Davidson. This was a circuit that I think in its inaugural race got off to a bit of a shaky start, but since then it's really drawn the fans in and become a very popular event. What do you think changed? Well, this just goes to show the importance of fixing problems as and when you discover them. As a complete unknown quantity in 2014, the tyre choice was quite conservative, which didn't really allow much in terms of different strategy options. So it was pretty much as you were from lights to flag. But that was a great learning experience and we came back the next year and had a really exciting Grand Prix with battles for the podium going on all the way to the final lap. So hopefully we'll be treated to more of the same this year. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Sebastian Vettel will start on pole. Fantastic qualifying from the multiple world champion. And Devon Butler lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Weber, Gasly, Lewis Hamilton, and Perez, Ricardo, Sainz, Leclerc, and Kevin Magnussen, Martinez, Norris, George Russell, and Verstappen, Raikkonen, Bottas, Lance Stroll, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Fiat, and Alexander Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay guys, so here we are then on the grid for the Russian Grand Prix, starting from P11, and it is what it is, you know, this is the consequence of saving points and trying to focus on next season. We are going to struggle to really qualify much further up than this, and making Q3 is going to be considered an achievement in many ways. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tricky one. P11, we are going to have the benefit of the free choice of tyre and starting the race on the mediums, which is good. And um, that might be a key factor for us in the races going forward. And, uh, you know, the qualifying might be less important. It might be all about the racing in terms of, you know, starting the race on the fresh tyre, on the slower tyre, and then coming good at the end. But in terms of fuel, we're going to run one extra lap and we're going to run a medium soft. Pretty straightforward strategy on around a one-stop circuit. And the important thing for us in this race is to try and be aggressive on the medium, try and stay in the race as long as we can in the medium tyre so then when we go into the soft we can catch and overtake plenty of cars so with that being said let's jump into it it's time for round 16 for the russian grand prix let's get to work right here we go then let's try and have a good start here build up the revs to the five red lights come on let's go lights are and away we go you know what that's not too bad to see i'm on a slow tyre i've had a lot better starts than that but definitely a lot worse luckily for me i've got a little bit of space here so we're gonna Try and get back down the inside. Down the inside of Russell and Norris. Get those positions back. Some debris there going across the racetrack. Side by side with Lando. We're going to try and go on the outside, but we're going to get pinched in. Oh, this is so close. At high speed. Down the inside of signs, though. We're going to semi on the brakes. There we go. Take that position. Job done. Up the P10. Good move there. Getting past both of the McLarens. How can we keep up through the second sector with these medium tyres? That's going to be the real question here. I was actually okay for pace around here. It's the final sector, to be fair, where I do lose a bit of pace. So I think we might be okay through here. But let's see if with the medium we can keep up with those around us. Seems like absolutely everybody's around the soft tyre. So we're going to be at disadvantage early on. But hopefully we'll come strong in the second half of the race. And McLaren is looking for a bit of slipstream. Also, my ride height is actually pretty low. I can hear my car bumping on the ground, which is something I couldn't hear in qualifying, surprisingly. But uh, 
It shouldn't affect us too badly. We should be okay for straight line speed. But so far, lap one, decent start so far. 27 to go. So uh, let's get ahead down. It's a long race. And uh, it could be a boring one in the sense that it's a one stop strategy and everyone's going to do the same thing. So this is going to try to make something happen here and have some decent race pace. The longer Seb holds at second place, the better for us. Somehow he started from pole, but I believe that's just a glitch. When uh, If you're not in the session, in this case I wasn't in Q3, the lap times that are set are set by the predetermined performance um, from like season one. So obviously the Ferrari can go quite quick. So I'm guessing that's how Seb got the pole. But he's going to start dropping back now. And he's causing this train, which for me is marvellous because it allows me to keep up with these guys because I don't have the pace. So I've got to be honest, I'm struggling to hold on. So uh, fine by me. Race officials have enabled DRS. DRS is now available. Yep, DRS available. We've got, it's important to stay within DRS now. The car's in front. The second we lose DRS, we could be in trouble. So it's important to not lose it. As there's a battle going on down towards turn one. Vettel side by side with, a, I think, a Mercedes. Got to say, it's a lively start to the race. No action of mine. I'm, I'm more, happy, more than happy just to sit behind and watch the action unfold. I'll only make the moves if I know I'm going to 100% complete them. If not, I'm happy to just watch from a distance and keep stay in the race in the mediums. And then, obviously, I'll have my chance later on on the soft tyres. But... Having said that, you know, these guys are pretty average on the straight. We've got good pace. I wonder if I can have a look at Magnussen possibly here. Oh, sorry, Charles Leclerc. Surprisingly, he's quite low. We are gaining on the Haas here. Down towards turn one, Leclerc. He's going to go defensive. Oh, my God. He's absolutely sent one on the Renault instead. He went from defending to attacking just like that. He's going to just get the edge, though, and get the slipstream. So he's going to close the door on turn three. But we're staying on their toes, which is what we want. That's what we want to be. Oh, Leclerc locks up. But I can't quite get the line right. Oh, I was never really coming in with enough momentum to really make the move. But it's all kicking off around us. There's lots of overtakes going on, so it's important to just stay in it and uh, not lose too much ground. Seems like it's a Mercedes here on the back foot. I'm going to crank it up here. Let's see if we can have a little look. We're a lot closer this time. That Mercedes is in trouble as uh, the Haas cars start to make their move. Down the inside of Charles Leclerc here. The Mercedes runs deep. We're close on the back foot. We're going to try and go around the outside. Yes, we do. There we go. All right, now this Mercedes is a bit more of a reasonable car for me to overtake. I think I've got a better chance of getting past this car. So let's try and get close and get the Ryman Butler here and try and get past it if we can. Mercedes cars are struggling. They're starting to drop through the pack. Meanwhile, Sebastian still somehow holding on to P2. I wasn't close enough to Butler to get any kind of run on the pitch straight. But this time, I might be close enough. I'm going to need to get a good exit out of here, though. Butler will have DRS, but... We're close enough to the point where we should get a decent tow. Come on, let's try and make this move here on the Mercedes. We're going to go the long way around. Hot on the brakes, but we are going to get it slowed down just about. That was quite good to be fair. I didn't think I'd get that slowed down, but we did. And that's the increased brake pressure I'm running this race. I'm running 78 instead of 75. I'm trialing it and see if I can try and get used to it because there's a lot of time for gain, I feel, in terms of overall lap time if uh, you drive with increased brake pressure. This is something I'm not very good at, but I'm going to try and teach myself and force myself to get better with. Either way, another lap done, another personal best. We're looking good here. Medium tires holding on nicely. Up to P8 now, making decent progress. Still got plenty of fuel in the RS to play with as well, which is good. As uh, Devin Butler has to get an under attack from Charles Leclerc. Meanwhile, there's more action in front. Action everywhere, to be fair. Magnussen here, just on the back of the Renault and I believe Pierre Gazzi in the Mercedes. Ricardo's on the back foot here. Attempting to go for a move. Could I? Surely not. Not around the outside here. Not quite. I'm just going to back out. We might get Ricardo on the straight though, which is what I want. He's in the back foot. He's not got the best toe. That's not the best exit though. Whoa, that's a big bit of oversteer. But we're still within range. The close trying to have a look. But luckily, I'm going to get the toe and the overspeed. This Ferrari is still pretty quick on the straight, even though we're not as fast anymore. Down the inside of Ricardo. No way through there, unfortunately. More overstick kicking in there. I have to catch it mid-corner. So that's what I want to try and avoid. I want to, if I'm, going to, if I'm going to go for the move, it's got to be defensive. I've got to make it stick. Can I get Ricardo this time? We are within range. I'm a lot closer than I was to uh, Magnus, I think it was, in the last lap. We are gaining on Ricardo here. Around the outside, no way through there. On the brakes, not as good as everywhere else, but we're keeping him under pressure, which is good. Just keeping the pressure on. Okay, look at 
Ricardo here is going to go for a move on Pierre Gasly. Gasly's got no DRS, so he's pretty defenseless. We're going to try and see if we can get the two for one. Down the inside on the brakes, a little bit later on the brakes. This time we're going to release the brake and make sure Gasly doesn't hang it around the outside. And there we go, we're past both Mercedes cars. So that's good for us in the championship in terms of our battle with them. Up to P7 now on the medium tyre. Good progress, but now you're going to start to notice the difference in pace as we start to drop away from Ricardo. I think he's going to start to pull away. But we'll try our best to hang in there with DRS as long as we can. The more important thing for me is to try and clear the cars behind and try and pull away from them if we can. As we set another personal best and we do manage to hang on to DRS, which is good. I think I'm going to make the move here. I've got a bit more pace than Ricardo, it seems. Strategy is available on the MFT. We're going for this. I'll look at the strategy in a minute. But let's go for the move here. There we go, easy move from Ricardo. I don't know why they offered a different strategy, it's exactly the same as the one I was going for anyway, but either way, we're through, up to P6, past the Honey Badger. I, I'm definitely not going to have the pace to pull away, but I just want to try and stretch the cars behind and try and break out the DRS. Not of Ricardo, but of the cars behind that, because I know Leclerc's in there, and it'd be, it'd be great if I could beat one of the Haas cars here today. Ricardo's going to back me though. This is what I mean, I don't really have the pace, I've just got good straight line speed to be honest, but my overall cornering speed is not great. And that's brought Leclerc back into play, so there you go, the plan's been ruined already. Shame. Personal best, decent pace into the 134s for the first time this race. I'm at the perfect spot where I'm keeping Ricardo at the perfect range, although having said that, Leclerc might give me some trouble here this time. I'm going to have to turn up the engine here just to make sure Leclerc stays behind. No, nope, Leclerc sends one regardless. At turn two, I've got to leave some room. He's going to go for it, I'm going to try and send him the long way around. At turn three, Rich Mix and Overtake engaged, let's try to get the shortest run. Down to the next corner. Leclerc commits and makes it work. Fair play. Too much pace. I couldn't really keep him behind. Hopefully we'll stay with him, but us three, Ricardo, myself and Leclerc, have pulled away from the cars behind now. So a little bit of an opening. And there's a little one up the road as well with uh, Vettel in there as well. So we're in the mix, which is good. We're in the mix on, on this strategy, which is what I wanted to be. The track is clear. Green flag. Yellow flag behind. Seems like a McLaren, I think, has slowed down. I think it's a McLaren. We'll confirm it in a minute, but uh, slow car behind. I'd be very surprised if we get a safety car or anything out of that. Lando Norris out of the race. And it looks like we've got a couple of cars in the pit lane here. Red Bull and a Haas in the pit lane. So there you go. Sebastian, Sebastian as well. Is in the pits. There's confirmation. So now's when we need to push. So let's give it some welly. Let's see what we've got left in these tyres. Let's see if we can try and pick up the pace a little bit. Try and catch up to Ricardo this lap. And see if we have any pace left in these medium tyres before we pit in around lap 16. Okay, so there goes Ricardo into the pit lane along with the rest of the leaders that started on the soft tyre and hadn't pit yet. Meanwhile, we're on for a good lap here. Personal best, there we go. Good pace, that's what we need. Just to respond and uh, make sure we stay on top of things here. They're all going to go into fresh mediums now and we're going to go for the soft later on. So hopefully that will bring us into play. And we might have a chance of securing the extra point here. So you never know. I'm have to keep an eye on the fuel one the ERS in case I need to go for a purple lap, which hopefully I can get. And hopefully this car still has enough pace to... Uh, Pull one out of the bag. Good pace so far. Every single lap has been pretty much within a tenth or a tenth off my personal best since I've been by myself out front. So it's good pace. Two more laps to go. This one and one more. Okay, some information on Perez. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. Okay, that's good news. One of the Renaults having trouble, which is good. One of the heavy hitters, one of the big teams. That's good news for us. Let's keep our head down though and keep pushing. Well, that's a big slide. Good catch though. Tires are starting to go a little bit. Right then, a tenth off my personal best. Pretty good in lap. Last lap was not so great. We've done okay. The overcut or staying out long, if you like, has been pretty good. Tires have held up relatively well and the pace has been pretty consistent. And we've stayed in first place. Managed to lead this, lap, this race for a couple of laps. Now we're going to pit in. I need a good stop from the boys. There we go. That's a good entry right there. Very good pit entry. Getting it slowed down beautifully. Now I'm relying on a good stop from the boys, a sub two second, and hopefully we get sent on our way. I tell you what, this looks good, this does, look at the map. Come on, boys. Go, go now. Oh, 1.8 pit stop, what the hell? Come on, boys. I'm looking at Vettel on the map and thinking to myself, you know what, we've got a chance here. Come on, let's get up to speed, we've got a chance. Vettel's going for the final corner now, there's three more cars around him, or two more, if you include him. Up to speed. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. Look at this. Oh my days, we're going to rejoin in P5. How have we done this? Oh my god, look at the, the battle behind. Sebastian Vettel just pretty much helped me out in this race by 
just holding people up. Look at that, he's battling with Leclerc. We've managed to get back in front of Leclerc. We're behind Ricardo again, but still, there's Perez, who's also struggling with his car. He's involved in that battle as well. So somehow, we've rejoined P5, fresh softs, on the brink of P4. Magnussen just up the road. Could we get a podium out of nothing this race? We lose P7 before the pit stops. I don't know where this has come from. Also, let's try and save some uh, ERS and fuel. Maybe we've got a shot at the fastest lap of the race, possibly. So I'm going to try and get everything back on target. And I'll use Ricardo's DRS. I'll try and pass Ricardo on the pit straight. And use it as a, as a, a massive slingshot to uh, get on my way. But how has this happened? Well, this opportunity has just been given to us out of nothing. This is incredible. Okay, then. It's time for the purple lap and the overtake on Danny Rick. Let's do this. Up to speed. Let's make this pass nice and easy, nice and soon, so we can get back onto the racing line. Ricardo will probably try to defend, but it's going to be absolutely pointless for him. To be fair, he's turned his engine up, he's got good speed. But we are going to just turn across, take the apex, there we go. Right, let's focus on this lap now, hot lap time. Let's try and set a purple lap and try and pull away over a second from Ricardo. We can do this. There we go, 31.6, there's the purple lap, what a lap that was. We've got a huge gap to Ricardo now. We're closer to Magnussen, so let's get our grafted boots on. Let's try and chase after the house, unless we can try and get him. We've still got a little bit of fuel in the RS left, so we'll try and save that for when we make the overtake. And let's try and catch him with just pure speed. I think we've got enough on these tyres to make it happen, so let's get to work and let's try and get after him. Okay, let's try and get within the RS here. Eight tenths behind. We've done it. We're within range. We've got the RS on Magnussen, so here we go. Let's try and close in a little bit and show my front wing a little bit, so he sees that little splash of red in the mirrors. We've got plenty of laps to do this overtake, so we're going to take our time. Although I don't have all day because my tyres will start to fade, so I've got to time it right. But I want to have enough ERS and fuel to try and pull away afterwards and not, um, you know, leave the book open. Try and close the book straight away. Right, I could pass him here, but I'm going to use this straight to save up as much fuel in ERS as I can to try and pull away. And I'll try and pass him with a slingshot, with a slingshot on the main pit straight like I did with Ricardo. So uh, let's try and save up as much as we can here for the rest of the lap. All right, here we go. Let's make this overtake happen. Up the standard engine mode, now into rich mix. Let's time this right at the house. Definitely not running high engine mode, so we're gonna breeze past. I'm never gonna have to use any ERS to make the overtake happen. It's a very simple move. And we make the overtake for P3, and somehow, onto the podium positions this race. I did not expect that one bit. I knew the strategy was good on the reverse, but that overcut has just worked out beautifully. You know, with Perez having car trouble, and Sebastian as well trying to, you know, battle where he shouldn't normally be battling. That's held up Leclerc and all three of them cost each other time. We've managed to pull off an ultra overcut. So that's good stuff. Let's try and pull away from Magnussen now. I reckon I can do this in standard engine mode without having to use any uh, rich mix or hot lap mode, I think. Okay, I think we've done it. Gaps around 1.2. Yeah, we should be okay. So there we go, job done. Now we've got to try and bring this one home. Some information on Gasly. They're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. There we go, reliability issues for the Mercs. So that's trouble for Perez and Gasly this race in the Renault and the Mercedes. Surely, you know, last season with the regulation change, we spent a lot on saving the durability part of the car. And that's the reason why we couldn't really upgrade this that much this season. I'm kind of hoping that, you know, even, even Red Bull and Haas start to struggle with that now because that was a big investment I made and I'm hoping it pays off. Here we go then, into the final sector for the final time, and what a strategy, what a race. The soft tyre worked out beautifully as Lucas Faber wins here at Sochi. Soft tyre is definitely the one for the second stint, we timed that beautifully. What a race, we stayed out of trouble, we didn't have to pace at all, but in that first stint, you know, you saw the battles going on in front of me, but we managed to just stay involved and not get into trouble, and there we go, we've paid the rewards, and here we go, P3 for us at Sochi, get in there, Forza Ferrari, bye! Okay, good job, mate. Really well done. That was a fantastic drive. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today. What do you think it was, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. 
Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. How does it feel sharing a Formula One podium with your old F2 teammate? You gained a lot of positions during the race, didn't you? Great, well that's everything. Right, so here we have the final race results for the Russian Grand Prix here today. Lucas Weber and Lewis Hamilton pick up another one two for Red Bull Racing and thus confirming them as constructors champions with five races to go a dominant 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 season from red bull this year absolutely untouchable so so strong but as you can see on screen they pick up a one two we come home p3 and actually pick up the fastest lap as well which is great news for us so somehow in a weekend where we didn't have the pace you know even sebastian vettel pulled out a decent p7 and even though we're the fifth quickest team now about to be the sixth quickest and probably be overtaken by williams we're still hanging in there and um, those points are very much needed for us but you can see magnuson p4 leclerc p5 ricardo p6 seb p7 and then butler signs and russell running out the points but in terms of the standings let's have a little look here and as you can see Hamilton leads the way in the Red Bull and he's 13 points clear of Lucas Weber those two are going to go head to head for the drivers championship no doubt we are currently 70 points behind and my target is to try and hold on to third place this season I think it's possible if I keep on having races like that and pulling that results out of the bag but um, yeah overall decent stuff from us and no complaints on my end and in terms of the constructor standings let's have a look here let's see currently you can see confirmation Red Bull 278 points clear i mean they've almost got double the points we have They're, they've already broken the 600 barrier and they'll probably break the 800 point mark by the end of the season easily maybe even 900 so uh yeah red bull so so strong and uh, credit to them for you know being absolutely untouchable this season and you know right in the last season going into the regulation change they really turned it up and uh, they've become a real big force to be reckoned with and dare i say stronger than they ever were back in their 2010 to 2013 dominance era but uh yeah guys that is it for this episode of career mode if you guys did enjoy it then drop a like on the video and also get subscribed if you are new i'll put some upgrades on in the next couple of races but for now like i said we're doing boring uh, upgrades so there's nothing really to do performance wise so we're just going to sit back and see how things get on but guys check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them and also turn on notifications to not miss any videos from me and also funny guys hopefully you enjoyed the video we'll see you in my next one very soon but until then it's a goodbye from me